Well, thank you, buddy. <laughs> you won't sit still for two seconds, I know. I was going to get you to tell everybody what you think about the new lens, but you don't care, do you? I think the dog eye tracking autofocus is fantastic. Okay, sit down for a minute. No. You'd think I never played with you. Hey, everybody's gonna think you're vicious. This is his favorite game. I'm not allowed to watch TV. We've gotta play Take the Gage Toy away from him. And he'll play this for hours. Won't you, buddy? I don't wanna play. You put holes in my socks. Get out of here, you wolf dog, you vicious. Go away. <laughs>
right here, for example, on this branch. But if we zoom in, I'll show you 500%. Now we can see it. There is some chromatic aberration here on these photos. And I've showed you guys how to fix that before. Uh, it's a one button click in Photoshop basically to get rid of that. But it's very well controlled. And if we look at this photo at a normal viewing distance, you won't see that. At this distance here, normal viewing distance, not a chance. At one to one, no, I don't even see it there. So I'd say chromatic aberration is not really something to worry about too much. There's, there might be some high contrast sunshine images that uh, show more purple fringing. It is there. Do we see it? No. So I'm not going to worry about that. The other thing we wanted to check was down here in the corners. We shot this photo at F4. Now remember, I'm focused on these leaves right here. This is where I set the camera to focus. That was probably seven or eight feet in front of me, those leaves. So down here in the corner, there is going to be a little bit of out of focus because we weren't focused you know, one foot in front of me, which is where these leaves are. So we're going to have some out of some depth of field out of focus here. And I, I'm, I'm thinking this looks pretty sharp, guys. I have not done anything to this image. I haven't sharpened it at all or anything. The extreme, extreme corners are a little bit blurry. I can see, I mean, not terrible. But we shot this at F4. If we come down into this corner, you can see what I mean. This oak leaf on the ground right here, it looks pretty good considering we were focused six feet past that. <laughs> and down here in the extreme corner is where it gets a little muddy and washed out. So, I mean, we could always crop the photos down here in the corner to get rid of that. But again, at normal viewing distances, you're never going to notice that. So this lens actually is, it has surprised me the quality of this lens. I'm impressed. The two complaints that people had about this little lens were it's not sharp corner to corner unless you stop down. And the second one was, oh, there's some chromatic aberration, which will be purple fringing on branches up in the high contrast areas where there's sky and things like that. But just looking on the screen at the photo I just took, I zoomed in, I'm not seeing it. I think for half the price of the Sony 11 millimeter, this guy's giving it a good little run here. Uh, I'm not, so far I haven't been disappointed with anything that I've seen from this lens. Especially because we're going to use it for video and I think my standard for video versus photography is a little bit lower. I mean, hell, we're we're filming this on my phone, right? We're phoning this on my film right now, I was going to say. But uh, the phones are pretty good nowadays, too. So, But just to get that large sensor, blurred out background, cinematic stuff, that's what I bought this for. And the fact that it's light enough that I can just put it on the ZV-E1 and hand hold it and vlog with it. That's it's going to be its main purpose. But I think the photography is looking pretty good, too, guys, to be honest. Oh, so we don't need it on a day like today, but I did buy a neutral density filter uh, for this lens, 62 millimeter, and KNF Nano X. Okay, so that's like their pro level, and I think it was about sixty dollars plus tax. So to get it for a smaller lens like this is, you know, half the price of one of my bigger lenses. So that's not a bad buy either. We don't need it, obviously, when it's gray and overcast like today, but we are going to need it for video work, especially. And then if we want to shoot this, uh, you know, in in the creek where we're going to slow down water, which we just did a, a video yesterday. Kaylee and I went to the river. I didn't have any neutral density filters with me. And I managed to hand hold because it was gray out and one sixth of a second. But normally you would put a neutral density filter on and to get those you know, movement in water effects, things like that. So I do have the filter. I'll have to show it to you guys. We'll, we'll try it and review it. I don't think there's uh, much to say. It's a pro level ND filter, so I'm sure it's fantastic, but we'll, we'll try that in a future video as well. Just to show you guys, this is the ND filter that we bought. KNF Concepts, the Nano X, which is their pro series. And then this is what the 
It actually has hard stops on it. I was worried after I bought it that it wouldn't. 62 millimeter. Obviously with the wide angle lenses, you gotta watch the distortion that you can get you know, when you get too close to a subject, but that's the same with any wide angle lens. So I do notice a little bit of vignetting on the frame. Uh, the corners are a little bit darker when this lens is wide open. Eh. All lenses are kind of like that to one degree or another, but I do like the color rendition from this lens. It's a little warmer than the Sony lenses. Sony lenses tend to have a little bit of a green tint, where this has more of a warm, orangey, kind of like the old Minolta lenses were renowned for their warm tone. Well, this lens kind of has that nice warm tone, and I like that. So here we are back on the ZV-E1, and this is what we're going to use this lens for mainly, which is video and vlogging and doing some cinematic stuff. Um, just a quick test with the other camera, just to see 24 megapixels. We'll zoom in on those. I'll show you guys, you know, did I find any chromatic aberration? At this price point, guys, <laughs> people are too picky now. We have so much choice. You know, 15 years ago, you didn't get a choice. You got one lens, it made a lot of noise when you zoomed it or focused it, and you made do, you worked around it. Now we've got all these options and choices and silent motors and eye autofocus tracking, um, animal eye autofocus tracking. I did miss that on the 6600 when I was taking some video and photos of Gage in the backyard. I was manually having to put it on his eye and focus. The new camera, it's, I mean, we just get lazy with these features, right? But anyway, this is what we're going to use it for. And I think in the minimal two hours of testing that I've done with it, I'm extremely happy with it for what I paid. I think it's going to more than do the trick. We will use it in the upcoming weeks, test it in all different ways, and we'll know more at that point. But for now, guys, first impressions, I'm extremely thrilled. Thanks for watching.